Good morning and happy Feast of Tabernacles. Over the course of my life, I have never felt the urgency of such that I feel this day during the ye this year's Feast of Tabernacles. For 30 years, from the time I was born to this very morning, the culmination of three decades is at hand. That my life, along with all of you, who have answered our Father's call and received the indwelling of his Holy Spirit, has found the unshakable meaning and purpose of preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God to all nations with resounding fervish and fiery passion. It is this coming cataclysm that our nation faces that temporarily has rattled and shaken the very heart of me. But what lifts my spirits up is the same that should lift all of our spirits up in such dark perilous times as this. And that is the envisioning of the kingdom of God here on earth. You see, brethren, this particular scripture we will read wasn't preserved just for us to read it. It was preserved so that we can envision it. What will it be like for God's kingdom to reign supreme on the earth? Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 65, verse 17 through 25. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 17 through 25. And it states, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem as a rejoicing, and her people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. The voice of weeping shall no longer be heard in her, nor the voices of crying. No more shall an infant from there, from there live but a few days, nor an old man who has not fulfilled his days. For the child shall die 100 years old, but the sinner being 100 years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plan, plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree, so shall be the days of my people, and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth children for trouble. For they shall be the descendants of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. And dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. About 2,000 years ago, our Lord and Savior gave his life and paid the penalty of our sins. For Isaiah records that he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And nearly 30 years ago, I was born, clinging to the arms of my mother and father for sustenance. They have raised me with the awareness of what our Savior did for us. And long have I pondered on the true meaning of his sacrifice and what it meant personally for me and to the rest of the world. That in the midst of this dark age ruled by the God of this world, our Savior began to form an army of salvation in which he alone is commander in chief. He began in establishing his church with the apostles and the indwelling of his Holy Spirit on Pentecost. He then commissioned his followers to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God to all nations. And now, to this present day, as the darkness around us continues to grow blacker and blacker, now is not the time to cower in defeat and shame or in fear and dread, no. For we, by this one scripture, along with many others, have the clear hope of a fast-approaching kingdom 
that will right every wrong once and for all. As our enemies seek to pull the entire world into utter darkness, we must stand and be bold in unleashing the light of truth given to us by our Father with all brightness and power. The light of truth must shine brighter than the darkest of this world's night. And it all begins in remembering this scripture of what it will be like when the kingdom finally comes. It is this vision, this hope, that our Savior's army of salvation was formed. And that army continued to grow for the next two millennia, spreading throughout the nations of the world as more and more people answered the Father's call. All the way to today, with you and me. Like good soldiers, we enlisted in that army of salvation when we ourselves answered the Father's call. We counted the cost, and we enlisted by going down into the waters of baptism and symbolically rose up a new man and a new woman. We enlisted with the vision and hope of the kingdom of God in mind, that it will be a beacon of everlasting peace for a world spiraling out of control. Let it be said that the world and forces that lead them have inaugurated open rebellion against the sovereign authority of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And since they have done so, we will meet them in the spirit as determined as the unrighteous wicked has exhibited toward the first fruits of the Most High. We march like soldiers on the battlefield, not for land or loot. We're fighting for the truth that the world needs the King of Kings and his everlasting kingdom. We're fighting to tell the world that its ways are bad and that their ways lead to humanity's literal extinction. That the numbers of this army started with Christ and 12 disciples have now grown to thousands upon thousands to this day. For the power of the Holy Spirit grows within each devoted follower of Christ, striking intense fear in the hearts of our enemies for they dread what we will become. That to all those who are able and willing to endure to the end, will be transformed to eternal spirit beings, one with the Father and the Son. That in all of the enemy's attempts to pervert, persecute, and destroy the first fruits of the Most High, with the last days fast approaching, the hordes of darkness now face obliteration. Just there, the principalities and powers of the air hurtle in cowardice and dread, with sheer terror gripping their hearts with icy fingers, knowing what horrors they faced at the resurrection of our Lord and Savior and the explosion of the church two millennia ago. Now, they witness the growth of the church at the last days, knowing how close that great day is coming, that all first fruits of the Most High will become eternal children of God with power and authority. This day, at this year's Feast of Tabernacles, let us all rally together and reignite the fire and passion to serve in our Lord's army of salvation. On this day, with the leading of our Christ, the solid rock, Together we work to rescue a world from the tyranny of sin, confusion, deception, and death and usher in a future brighter than anyone could have ever imagined. Young people, you must decide. Now is the time. Is this your parents' church or is this your church? Is this your parents' faith or is this your faith? For the time is coming the time has already come when the separation between those who are for real and those who are just faking it to make it will commence. And the secrecy of the latter will finally be exposed. You must decide, not tomorrow, but now. The urgency of now is upon you and it is upon all of us. We all must decide whom do we serve because dark times are coming. The last days are quickly approaching and the drums of war are beginning to sound. This army of salvation, led by the Son of Man, includes his devoted followers, the first fruits of the Most High. 
And I tell you, to those of you who have completely turned away from the world and have repented of your evil ways, you are the first fruits of the Most High. To those of you who have taken the plunge beneath the waters of baptism and have come up a new creation in Christ, you are the first fruits of the Most High. To those of you who seek diligently in the scriptures and study and meditate on it day and night, you are the first fruits of the Most High. To those of you who have truly taken up our Savior's command to love one another, no matter what organization they may attend, you are the first fruits of the Most High. To those of you who stand courageously, invading the world with the truth of the gospel, to execute the great commission to preach this gospel to all nations. You are, you are the first fruits of the Most High in the affections of your Father in heaven. Let it be known that this Feast of Tabernacles will institute a rebirth of passion within the Church of God as we stand side by side as soldiers of this army of salvation with swords drawn and shields raised as we face the coming dark without fear or dread. For we know what God we serve who is greatest of all. We do not cower to the evils of the world, but we rally against them, knowing the power that rests within us with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Dear brethren, when the days grow darker, when the times become even more dangerous, remember on this day, that the rally cry of the Army of Salvation's infantry here on earth has reignited new courage to continue to fight against the darkness of this world. For that day is coming. As we hold the righteous line with all determination across this battlefield of earth, let us be reminded that the Calvary is coming and our King and Savior will return in the nick of time riding on a white horse with the heavenly armies of God Almighty behind him. Let us be cheerful even in the face of the coming blackness that the Calvary is coming to restore peace to the world once and for all. I tell you today that a day will come when the operations of the church will have to cease and the baton will be passed to the two witnesses on the final day, but it is not this day. A day will come when we will no longer have the freedom to meet like this without fear of persecution and death, but it is not this day. A day may come when some of us will be led to the place of safety and hiding and no longer be able to broadcast the truth to the world, but it is not this day. This day we fight, not against flesh and blood, but against the powers and principalities of the air. For everything that you hold dear about the coming promise of his eternal kingdom and all that he has to offer to this broken, decaying world with the armies of the almighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and by the power of his Holy Spirit he has placed within you, I bid you stand as first fruits of the Most High. Now is not the time to fear any man or any devil. Now is the time to stand as soldiers and hold the righteous line. For that great day is coming. And may that day come quickly. When all the angels rejoice at the sound of the seventh trumpet. And the first fruits take up the call. The king of kings has returned. Glory be to God in the highest. Amen and amen.